Good news, everyone! It is time for science fiction. You can't see shit out of these things. I mean, really, you can't. It blocks out all light. It's a complete wall of black. Anyway, I'll go without them. Today, we're going to be reviewing Friday by Robert Heinlein. I'd like to send my thanks to one of my patrons, Forrest, who asked that I review this book. And I had a great time talking with you, man. And uh, I will most certainly uh, follow your request. Uh, Forrest requested that I take Friday and I tie in some of the themes to the book to feminism, social justice, and the way they look at the world, since you can find a lot of parallels here. One thing before we get started. This is a memoir of an artificial person working as a combat courier. Friday is genetically engineered to be superior to every natural-born human being, and she uses her skills to deliver precious cargo to shady people in politically unstable territories. She risks death every step of the way because the law does not recognize an artificial person as a human being. Friday's central conflict is to fit in, to belong, and every time she settles in with somebody who, th who she, she thinks loves her, some personal dysfunction, political event, or job-related risk forces her to change settings. And Robert Heinlein's intention appears to be to make you question what makes a human being, in spite of lab conditions forming a human being. Before I go too much farther into various criticisms, I would like to praise Robert Heinlein's effective writing. He's able to communicate complicated ideas by giving you only just enough information so that your imagination can take care of the rest. And with this, he gives the, his writing a much faster pace. It's Compare this to, say, murder mysteries, where often the author would describe every little thing in exhausting detail. But Robert Heinlein gives you a very rapid, uh, how should I say, moving picture of the world. So you are left to fill in a lot of blanks. And I think this is a good thing, because I enjoy it when books give me m more to work with, more, more for my imagination to work with, rather. A key character in Friday is Friday's father figure, Boss, who heads the operation in which Friday works. Boss provides all of the conditioning Friday needs for her job. She, he honed her body, her mind, her reflexes, her ability to kill, and in doing so, made Friday a flat character. It's difficult for me to sympathize with Friday for the same reason it's difficult for me to sympathize with Superman or Batman. In any conflict, when you look at Friday's abilities, you know that she's going to win. In fact, during the book, she performs stunts such as running over a hundred miles in just a course of a day in a, a, just a single interval sprint and swimming across the Mississippi River and being able to kill a cop within a couple of seconds. The kind of superpowers that make you look at Friday and you realize she's a flat character. And you even, you get this impression that she doesn't even need rights. So the central premise of the book already has some tension because Friday has the ability to duck out of any physical or political problem she encounters, even if there's a threat coming at her. And she gets out of situations that seem impossible, and even if a mob were to pursue her, you get the impression she'd be okay anyway. So the only conflict you're left focus on is Friday's need to belong. Now one of the more amusing things about this book is that it is the feminist dystopia, patronizing, xenophobic, unstable men in political office, and individual condescending men who target Friday, they're all here in this book. Now, to Heinlein's credit, the misandric or gynocentric tropes are nowhere near as bad as they are in other books, such as Janet Ivanovich's uh, Stephanie Plum Detective series. And if you're interested in a comedy series, that is a good comedy series, but you detect there's a chip on the author's shoulder the whole way through. In Heinlein's case, he appears to be adding a gender dimension to the problem of fitting in, such that that problem is caused by the men in power. And that, um, I suppose it's just my politics here, but that to me suggests 
that it's harder for me to identify with the situation. Robert Heinlein appears to be in the habit of writing himself into a corner and then invoking a deus ex machina to move the plot forward, rather force the plot forward in a contrived way. For example, when Friday is in some impossible situation, she suddenly remembers oddly specific training that gets her out of that exact situation. Friday commented on a little pouch in her belly button that she uses to smuggle small cargo. And she commented on how border officers, if they detected it, every border officer would know and would check for that in the future. But when Friday needed to cross a closed border, suddenly she would find the border officer that was just too preoccupied to really monitor her. And she was able to slip through with things with simple disguises, and it seems to me that Heinlein will just make exceptions for Friday whenever she needs to move the plot. And, <laughs> amazingly, even if Friday is severely injured, she can always connect with somebody in Boss's network and have entire body parts regenerated. I need to be able to worry about characters. Robert Heinlein makes it very difficult for me to worry about Friday. And again, spoiler alert, Boss dies, but at the time, Friday won a lottery, so she had the money she needed to get anything she wanted done anyway. There was never a time when Friday could not fall back on some sort of cushion that made it impossible for her to lose. And because of this, again, the only conflict is Friday's emotional needs, in spite of all the dangers. And honestly, I can't really relate at that point. On an entirely different subject, I'd like to comment on the setting's economy. We're set in the distant future, but the only real innovations appear to be in medicine, transportation, and energy. But all of the same brands that we're familiar with today, such as McDonald's, Bank of America, MasterCard, they still exist in this setting, but with different political reaches. IBM, for example, has grown to a corporation so large that it has its own militia, basically. They have a military presence and are able to basically oppress through a very, how should I say, embedded corporate evil. So that is kind of a problem for me because when you read sci-fi novels like Dune, where you don't know what the fuck is going on. You, it's enjoyable because you have to piece a lot of things together. But what it looks like Heinlein did with the setting, and the economy in particular, was take a lot of the things that we were already familiar with, add very little in terms of creative extension, and then just scramble everything politically with just existing brands. And that, to me, all it did was make me want to uh, relearn shit I kind of already knew to begin with. But I wasn't in I never got the impression I was reading into anything alien, which is one of the this part of the appeal of sci-fi novels in my mind. Setting and Deus Ex Machina aside, I suspect a plot hole. Have you ever been in a eighth grade history class and the teacher poses a difficult diplomatic question to everybody? And there was that one kid who ate glue in kindergarten who said something like, Why don't we just bomb them all? Ba -ba 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 and you just yeah, that's a test to see who goes to alternative school later, but the point is, when I read Friday, I started to wonder if there was something to what that kid was saying. Because artificial persons, at any given moment, want to admit that they're artificial persons. They feel the same way Friday does. At least that's the impression you're given throughout the entire book, even when Friday communicates with other artificial persons. Why has an artificial person not gone postal any time during this story? When Friday was meeting with Boss, Boss once commented on Friday's ability to kill and suggested that she become an assassin. Friday refused, but through that refusal I detected this problem. Okay, Friday won't go postal, but why has not any other artificial person? She's not alone. And during the story, you learn that politicians are frequently assassinated by other human beings. 
Well, of course, that's a misnomer, since artificial persons are human beings as well. At least, that's the argument that Robert Heinlein presents. But I'm talking about human beings as recognized by the law. Just the non-artificial human beings attack politicians, and most of the time, elected representatives don't even survive their full terms. So if human beings are able to do this to one another, imagine what artificial persons can bring to that conflict. If there was a revolution of the, I suppose, Marxist variety, artificial persons would be the clear winner. But that never, that sudden revolution is never really addressed in the book. It's, you only really detect that was an option once you see that Friday refuses to be an assassin. But an assassin's network is the solution to the political instability. At least, it is one possible solution. And since death and destruction are the norm in the setting, you would wonder why it would be an ethical issue to begin with at that point. So, the logic of the former glue eater in 8th grade history class seems to be an effective method, or it seems to actually form an effective method for resolving political instability in this book. I think that's a minus. My final complaint is about the brick wall ending. Again, spoiler alert. As you approach the end, after all that Friday has gone through, Friday says that she feels like she belongs, and that's it. Most of what happens in the middle, after that moment, feels like padding. A lot of the content in Friday could be reduced down to a long poem, where a lot of the political instability and all that stuff could just be left out. And how do I know this? Because Friday ended up solving her emotional problem by finding other artificial persons and people who like her, and then huddling around them and a protective bubble without making any attempt to change the world around her. Now, this runs against the spirit of activism we often hear about. There's a setting in the and there's a setting called the California Confederacy, which is a shining example of direct democracy gone wrong. At every perceived discomfort in the California Confederate standard of living, they can change the law very easily. So there's a lot of political instability, dumb policies, especially financial ones. And as a result, you get the impression that it would not be too difficult to convince at least the California constituency that artificial persons are human beings. Heinlein paints a lot of people, in the California Confederacy in particular, as a mob that thinks with their emotions. One of the men that Friday met was worried about losing his job to an artificial person because artificial persons were becoming a discussion topic in unions. So clearly, artificial persons were becoming a subject of political discourse, and the political environment, while unstable, was priming itself for the inclusion of artificial persons. So I, it, was ne it was never explained why Friday felt this compulsion to hide and to huddle when artificial persons apparently are recognized. And this is an interesting fact, too, because one thing that's repeated several times in the book is that no one, can tell the difference between a real human being and an artificial one, since they're both grown from human DNA. But, apparently, artificial persons are a subject for political discourse, so apparently people can distinguish them somehow. You get that kind of sense of the contradiction in other parts of the book, but that's never really explained. So, all in all, Friday, it's not the best written book in the world. Robert Heinlein's style is great. He, he writes effectively such that I have a lot of room for my imagination. And he is in some ways entertaining. But when it comes to managing his plot, 
I hope this is not representative of his collection, because I wasn't really impressed. But if you're interested in a new author, and you want to try Robert Heinlein, a lot of people like him. And if you want to uh, try out Robert Heinlein, I personally would suggest you try a different book. He has other books that sold more copies than this one. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you wish to hear reviews uh, similar to this one, please consider contributing to my Patreon. And I send my thanks again to Forrest for uh, suggesting this book. And I will have a signed copy mailed out to you as soon as you're ready, bud. Thank you very much. Victor's and out.